Hey folks, Pastor Jason here. Welcome back to The Connection. Good to have you with me today. I want to get right into our topic tonight, and that is on the word inheritance. Uh, there's been a lot of talk here lately about things that have been happening in Israel, and I've told my church many, many times, if you want to know where we are in the prophetic timeline, keep your eyes on Israel. Watch what's happening in Israel. And of course, there's a lot of talk right now about uh, Joe Biden and the way that he's treating Benjamin Netanyahu, the president of uh, the prime minister, excuse me, of Israel. And, you know, one of the reasons why Biden has given Netanyahu such a hard time is that Netanyahu is pressing ahead with the uh, new settlements that are taking place in the land of Israel. And the thing about it is, um, you know, Joe Biden's upset because they're, you know, he calls it encroaching on Palestinian land. And um, the thing of it is, there's no such thing as Palestinian land. And that is the land of Israel. That is the land of the Jewish state. And so, of course, this goes back many, many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. And we're going to explain a little bit about that. But uh, Israel has a sovereign right to the land of Israel. And so I want to get into this because I think it's interesting that we know sometimes the background of things that are happening in the world. Um, when the Roman army captured the land of Israel and captured Jerusalem in order to humiliate the Jews and to really just, you know, embarrass them really well, they ended up calling the land of Israel Palestine. And Palestine is a, a of course, we in the English language, we call it Palestine, but Palestine is derived from the word Philistia, which are the Philistines. And, you know, I've heard many, many times people say over the years that um, the Palestinians, as they are called, those, those people that are living in the Gaza Strip and in the West Bank, um, they are ancient um, relatives or ancient descendants of the Philistines. Well, that is absolutely not true. And it has been proven by DNA science. As a matter of fact, they have dug up uh, Philistine graves in the land of Israel and scientists have done study on the DNA of these and even compared the DNA of those Philistine remains with people that are alive now in the land of Israel or what the world calls the Palestinian area and there, there are none of those people that have any Philistine DNA in them at all. When God speaks in his word and God says that he is going to wipe out a people, you are not going to be able to find a trace of that people if God says they're going to be wiped out. And that's what happened to the Philistines. The Philistines were wiped out and there are no one living in the occupied territories, as we call them, in the land of Israel that are considered Gaza and the Gaza Strip and the West Bank that have any Philistine blood at all. As a matter of fact, if you want to be technical about it, the, st the DNA studies that were done prove that of some of those people, not all of those people, because you got to remember a lot of those people that are living in those territories are refugees from other countries. Um, a lot of them have a percentage of Canaanite DNA, which the Canaanites were the ancient people living there in the time when God commanded the Israelites to go in and take the promised land, which we know God promised the land to Israel and the land is their heritage. The land is their inheritance. As a matter of fact, if we want to be even more technical, the land that is called Jordan, the Jordanian kingdom, actually belongs to the Israelites as well. If you remember when Joshua was leading the children of Israel into the promised land, they were defeating kingdoms on this side, of, on the east side of the Jordan River. And so the, the Reubenites and the half-tribe of Manasseh and the Gadites said they were they were big big herders and sheep herders and they said this land right here is perfect for what we do can we have our inheritance on this side and of course joshua told him he said if you will cross the jordan and fight with your brother when the battles are over you can come back to this land so that land actually in the land of jordan which we call the jordanian kingdom is actually it is actually israeli property as well and one day that will be restored back to the jewish people so there, there's no such thing as palestinians you have to remember your your everything you're hearing from that area comes out of the liberal media and comes out of the globalist mindset and there will never be a two-state solution because the what we call the palestinians 
do not want a two-state solution. They want to drive the Israelites into the sea. That has been their motto, and that has been what they have said time and time again. So there, there is no, there will be no two-state solution. So, so we have to understand that that land belongs to the people of Israel. Now, what's interesting as well that there, as through those DNA studies that were conducted and done, there are actually what you call Jewish Arabs. There are people of Arabic descent that are actually Jewish living in the occupied territories of what it was called the Palestinian areas. So um, that's interesting too as well. So, you know, God, God knows what he's doing, folks. God knows what he's doing. He has a plan for everything that is taking place. And, you know, of course, there's a lot of questions that arise as to, you know, who's who and who's what and, and all these things. One of these is the Samaritans. And of course you can go to the Bible and find out the origin of the Samaritans. Uh, when the Assyrians attacked the land of Israel, the Assyrian empire had a habit of, if they uh, destroyed a country over here, they took those people and put them over here in this country. And they took the people from that country and put them over here. Of course, you can, you can read all about that in the Bible. I don't have it right here in front of me now to tell you where it's at, but it is in there. And uh, so there's just a lot of, you know, a lot of different things at play. And, and you, you know, of course, that was hundreds and thousands of years ago when all this stuff was going on. But yet we see the same thing being played out today in our time. Um, as a matter of fact, in our text, we're going to go to Nehemiah chapter 2. And we're going to read verses 17 through 20. And we're just going to kind of condense this down. Of course, you know the story of Nehemiah, how he felt such a tremendous burden when he heard about the condition that Jerusalem was in after the Babylonians had come in there and destroyed the city of Jerusalem and how it, how it laid in ruins for many, many years. And so he had a burden for it, and God actually opened the door and gave him tremendous favor for him to go back there and to rebuild the city walls of Jerusalem. Now, Ezra had gone ahead of him as God had commissioned him to go back to start restoring back the uh, the Jewish religion and start establishing the people back to the Word of God again and getting the people out of that mindset that they have been in for hundreds of years and that's why God actually sent them into bondage. But so there's a lot of things going on here, but I like what he, he says here, and this is what we're going to talk about. We'll talk about inheritance. So uh, Nehemiah is talking to the, the elders and the people of Jerusalem that came back with Ezra during the times of Zerubbabel when he was the governor of Israel. And he says to them, he said, later I told them, you are all watching the predicament we're in, how Jerusalem lies desolate with its gates burned by fire. Let's rebuild the Jerusalem wall so we are no longer a disgrace. Then I told them how good my God had been to me and about what the king had told me. They replied, let us go out there and build. So they encouraged themselves to do good. But when Samballat the Horonite, which Samballat is a Moabite, and his servant Tobiah the Ammonite, so we still have factions of the Moabites and the Ammonites living in the land of Israel. Of course, we know their their lineage goes all, all the way back to the ancestral relationship between Lot and his two daughters, and that's where these people come from. And Geshem, the Arabs, so there were Arabs, the Arab tribes, of course, the Arab tribes were those uh, of the Midianites and those of Esau's people and those of Ishmael's people called the Arabs, heard about it. They jeered at us and despised us when they said, what is this thing you are doing? You are rebelling against the king, aren't you? In reply to them, I said, the God of heaven will prosper us. That is why we are preparing to build. But as far as you're concerned, and here's going back to what I began to talk about at the beginning, there exists no ancestral heritage no legal right, nor any historic claim in Jerusalem. So in other words, Nehemiah was telling him, listen, it is none of your business what we're doing. We are on commission from the king to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, and you have no historic or ancestral right to the city of Jerusalem. And that's the topic I want to talk about tonight. So it's kind of just setting some historical, and now we want to set some spiritual ground here. And, you know, like I said, Nehemiah had a tremendous burden when he heard about the condition of the city of Jerusalem. And, and God used that burden that he had 
to open the door for him to go back. And he had letters from the king. He had permission from the king to, to use the resources of the area that was around him, the different peoples that were there. And of course, you know, please do yourself a favor and go back and read the book of Nehemiah, read the book of Ezra, and you'll get a clear picture of what I'm talking about and, and where some of these peoples come from that really begin to withstand against Nehemiah the people and the people of God. But they begin to fight them. They begin to come against them and try to, everything they can do to shut down what God was doing there in the land of Israel and in the city of Jerusalem. And there are moments that it seemed like the enemy was successful. But Nehemiah would not be deterred by threats. He would not be deterred by any kind of attack. As a matter of fact, they pressed on and continued to build the city of Jerusalem and completed it in an, in an astronomical short amount of time. I mean, it was absolutely amazing. Um, I guess maybe astronomical is not the word to put it in that context, but I mean, it was in a, in a really, really short amount of time that they finished the walls of Jerusalem and, and, and it was such a tremendous feat and such a tremendous sign to the enemy that God was with them. And he said to the people of Israel, let us rise up and build. Let us rise up and build. And I think God is calling us to the same thing. You know, we, we live in this time of so many, so many odd things are taking place and we're being fought on every side. And, and, you know, I was telling my wife the other day, we, we were just talking about different things that were taking place and, and, you know, how we felt in the spirit about these things. And, and I told her, I said, you know, as we begin to talk, it was just really revealing, you know, how, how, you know, how in tune we were with each other and how God was just speaking to the both of us on two different levels, but it was all coming together and just meshing together very beautifully. And, you know, and I told her, I said, I don't believe that we're about to be um, taken over by China. I don't believe we're about to be taken over by Russia. I said, I believe that God's going to shake some things. And we've had several different prophecies about, and you, you can look up some of them on YouTube uh, from different people, different prophets that God's been speaking to. Things are going to be shook up, but through it all, God is going to bring tremendous revival to the church. I mean, look at the things that are happening in politics right now, how things are being revealed, how things are being brought to the surface. I want to say God knows what he's doing. And, and this, this may be, some of you may not agree with me, but I really believe that God had to move Trump out of the way in order for some of this stuff to be exposed that he can take care of it. Uh, and so, and I know God's taking care of it. I know God. And, and what we're seeing, I believe is just a trickle to what God is about to do in this country and the revival that's coming to this country. So it is time for the people of God, first of all, to rise up. We've been down too long. We've been quiet too long. We've been hiding in the shadows too long. We've been sticking our head in the sand like an ostrich. Is, and an ostrich is a huge, huge bird. But yet when he gets scared, it sticks his head in the sand. And, you know, the thing of it is your head's covered, but your rest of you is still exposed. So, you know, you can't go into hiding. You have to, you have to understand God's in control of all this stuff. He's working for us. He, everything that is happening in the world is about his church. We've got to keep that in mind. It's about us. It's about revival. It's about reaching the center and seeing revival happen in our cities and in our country. And we have to get excited about that. So first of all, we've got to rise up. Are we being threatened? You better believe we are. Things are happening, but God is working on our side. See the things that are coming out through the uh, Supreme Court. God is working. God is moving. There's been some tremendous cases that have been won on behalf of the of conservatives on on behalf of Christians so we have to take encouragement in that and realize God's working for us right now things are coming together things are taking place so we need to rise up the second thing is God will prosper us this is not going to be a season of us just straggling and and you know trying to counting out spiritual pennies to try to get from one spiritual season or one spiritual month to the other. This is going to be a time of prosperity in the spirit realm. Yes, the fine, there may be financial you know interest rates may be rising and people keep talking about the you know the financial system is going to crash. I don't know. I don't. I'm not into any of that kind of stuff. I just know this that God's going to prosper us. And John said this, he said, um, he said, it's exciting to see his children walk in love one toward another. And he prayed for them. He said that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So there is a soul prosperity that can happen to the church. And that is, I believe is coming now 
upon the church, God's going to prosper us. God's going to prosper us spiritually and God's going to take care of us financially. So we have to understand it's not time to hold back purse strings. If God wants you to invest in his kingdom, invest in his kingdom. Give to the kingdom of God. Give so that things can be done so that we can have outreach in the church. So do those kinds of things. God, the God of heaven, the God who controls everything, Nehemiah said, will cause us to prosper. He said, we will rise up and build. He said, as far as the enemy goes, you have no inheritance, no historical claim, no ancestral claim. We can say the same thing. I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. We can say the same thing to the enemy. This city, whatever city you're in, whatever town you're in tonight, whatever country you may be in, you need to decree and tell the devil tonight you have no ancestral claim to this city, to this country. This country belongs to God. This city belongs to God. You have no ancestral claim. You have no right and no inheritance. The city you're in, the province you're in, the country you're in, wherever you at to, wherever you're at tonight, wherever you're watching from, that is your inheritance. Just like the Lord told Abraham, walk through the breadth and the length and the width of the land. Everywhere you put down your foot, I'll give it to you. He, Joshua reminds the people of Israel hundreds and hundreds of years later, he said that wherever you put down your foot, God's going to give it to you because that was God's promise. It's the same thing that we have an inheritance. As a matter of fact, when we talk about, you know, warfare, the Bible said, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that would arise against you in judgment, you shall condemn. For this is the heritage or the inheritance of the children of the Lord. So we have that inheritance. First Peter chapter one, verse four talks about that we have an incorruptible inheritance waiting for us in heaven. We are a people of great inheritance. Hallelujah. We have blessings in reserve from God. Most of the time when somebody talks about receiving an inheritance, it happens after someone dies. I will tell you, there's going to be some things that are going to happen. There are going to be some battles that are going to die. There's going to be some enemies that are going to die. There's going to be some situations that are going to die. And in that process, God is going to release inheritance, inheritable blessings into your life. And God's going to pour out these blessings that have been in reserve for you. It's coming. Hang on to the things of God. Hang on to the promises of God. Hold on to your faith. Don't let your faith waver. Don't let your faith crumble. Look to God. Set your affection on things that are above and not on things of the earth. And step into the inheritance that God has for your life. And I'm telling you something. It is incorruptible. And it doesn't belong to the enemy. It belongs to you. Take what belongs to you. Live and exceed and excel in the inheritance that God has for your life. It's ours. The enemy has no historical claim, no ancestral claim, no right to the blessings and the inheritance that God has reserved for you. And it's about to be released. I'm telling you, it is about to be released upon the church. Get excited. Open Jewish people when they pray, when they start out to pray, they would hold their hands out like this as a sign of surrender to God. After surrendering to God, they would turn their hands like this. That was an action of receiving. We, we need to surrender to God and then get ready to receive what God has for us because it's coming and I want to be a part of it. I want you to be a part of it. I want our church to be a part of it. I want our church people to be a part of what God is doing and what God is going to do. So I hope tonight that you take this message to heart, get excited about it. Don't look at all this stuff going on in the world and think, oh man, doom and gloom, we're going under, it's all terrible, we're all going to die, blah, 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 blah. No, fix your mind, your attention, your heart, your focus on God. Get it on the things of God. Get ready to live out the inheritance. I'm not saying it's all going to be peaches and cream because it, it, it won't. There's going to be times of testing. You're going to go through times of testing, tribulation, all these things. But in the process of it all, God is going to pour out tremendous inheritance upon us. Amen. So be blessed tonight. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to connect together tonight. And I pray, Father, that you would minister to those who are watching, 
that they become encouraged God tonight, that they become bold and brave and fearless in the face of their enemies and be like Nehemiah and say, listen, you have no right to any of this stuff. Get out of here, leave us alone. We're gonna rise up and we're gonna build and God's gonna prosper us in this and we're gonna do things the devil told us we'd never be able to do. So Father, thank you tonight for the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Be with us tonight, encourage us, give us strength. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father, and we praise you. Amen. God bless you tonight. Thank you for being part of the connection. If you're not a subscriber, please connect with us and, and check out our other uh, messages that we have on YouTube. So connect with us tonight. If you like it, give us a thumbs up. If you've got a comment, leave a good one. We don't read bad ones. We only read good ones. So thank you. Leave a good comment. We love you and we appreciate you. And as always, stay connected to God. God bless.